Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech, and AI. In this week's show, Dave and I will be talking about the enterprises have enough to worry about with the data breaches that seem to be occurring each week. But now we are learning that social media network systems are gathering and using all sorts of data about everyone, even the people that aren't using the platform. Hi Dave, great to see you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, great to be here. I'm looking forward to this topic, man, because everybody's been calling me and emailing me and uh, twittering me about uh, privacy issues in the cloud. Privacy seems to be on everyone's mind these days. Should it get the press it's getting? And should the sea levels worry about the risk that's being bounded about? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, they're worried about uh, kind of the influence of social media in uh, affecting the elections in 2016. I think the reality, and we think we talked about this last week, that uh, social media has been leveraged in uh, the last couple of elections and it's very powerful. And I think it's probably getting more powerful than people think and it's edging people's minds and people are looking at their phones all the time. And the other thing that is coming up is we had this thing called the Cloud Act um, in the United States and this is clarifying law. I know they took this acronym and forced it into the word cloud, clarifying lawful overseas use of data act. And that's a, uh, really kind of, of course, cloud, that's what it spells, uh, and become a law that lets law enforcement gather your corporate data from servers that are overseas. And so everybody's freaked out a bit about this. And I think this makes people paranoid uh, in terms of if they put their information in the cloud, that there doesn't really have to be due process um, to get the information back, at least in the United States. Now, it's interesting to me that non-US based cloud providers, guys like Alibaba, and there's a few others in Europe, and there's some MSPs in Europe, may not be affected by this. So it may drive a lot of US companies you know, into the hands of the overseas operators because they know they're not beholden to this law because it's out of the jurisdiction of the United States. And, and so it hasn't been tested yet. I haven't seen you know, wide, you know, you know, wide uh, use of it. Um, I have, no one's complained about it unless it's occurring in the shadows and they're signing non-disclosure agreements, but it will be at some point. So we could have this system where we put, you know, petabytes of information that may exist, you know, in Ireland, which is a big, you know, technology hub. You know, a lot of cloud providers put data centers there and suddenly the government wants it and the larger cloud providers, I'm gonna name the ones that are out there, but have to give it over because of the Cloud Act and they don't have to necessarily go through due process. Now there is some things you have to have Congress uh, authorize it. It's you know something where you don't have these uh, uh, private courts like a FISA court in the United States. And it's a little bit more open than I think some of this stuff uh, that occurred with the Patriot Act. And But you know, now, I can see a huge career, <laughs> and you should look at this as a recruiter, you know, in terms of someone who's specialized in cloud computing law, security law, privacy law, things like that, because we have GDPR, we have China, all the standards that are popping up there, we have things that are localized to Australia, you know, where you are, and now we have all these various new legislation and new laws that have come into, uh, that have uh, been passed, and they're out there, they're a law uh, that you have to deal with. At the same time, we have information that can be leveraged uh, that's gathered from Facebook. And so the ability to look at different trends and look at different uh, uh, ways in which people are thinking. And we're gathering private information from these individuals to, in essence, enhance our ability to make decisions with product companies, you know, for-profit companies and political campaigns, things like that. And I think the United States, at least, and I think probably it's probably more so out of the United States. I mean, it's talked to the Europeans. They're, they're downright mad about this, you know, are really kind of pushing back on a lot of the stuff in them dealing with the privacy and the data that they're putting out there and leveraging social networks. And so um, we had, uh, you know, the, the president and the founder, Mark Zuckerberg of, of Facebook, he was talking to Congress, which was you know, kind of a funny thing to watch, but uh, you know, that's going on these days. I suspect that other t tech companies are being called in front of Congress. And we've probably gone too far in assuming that we can gather information from individuals just based on the fact that they're delivering patterns or leveraging some sort of application. And by the way, it's not just Facebook, let's not blame them. Uh, Twitter does it to a certain extent. 
um, not to the extent that Facebook does. But the reality is if you carry a loyalty card, you know, for a food store or for a coffee shop or for a sandwich shop, they use that to track you. They gather market information from you. You know, there's a case a couple of years ago where a woman was buying certain things from Target and using her loyalty card. And evidently, her uh, father got some uh, paternity uh, stuff in the mail because she happened to be pregnant. He didn't know about it. And so that ended up being a breach of privacy for her. And, and so we need to start shoring this stuff up um, more so than we have in the, in the past and think long and hard about the practicality of it. And I think that that's what's kind of being left behind. We're thinking about monetary consumption. We're thinking about uh, legal issues, you know, such as the Cloud Act and all the other things that are out there. When this really comes down to organizations really kind of paying attention to what's right, um, you know, what should be, you know, uh, published as a policy and how they should treat their customers. And I want to, sorry about the long dry, diatribe. What do you think? I agree with everything you're saying. I just want to add as well, I think the differences that we're moving to now um, from the loyalty card aspect is everything's about the psychology of the user. Um, and playing on the the, 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 the the traits of narcissism or anxieties or fears or that sort of thing. Uh, and, it, and it really draws, it can draw the best out of people, it can draw the worst out of people. It can certainly draw the consumer out of people and the opinions out of people. And that's the sort of thing that empowers the network, that empowers the addictive behavior behind the network. You know, how many likes is my profile picture getting and how validated is my life now because a group, hundreds of people that don't know me, you know, are sharing the experience or, or liking the picture or commenting is a form of, you know, validating something that, that really, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, never needed validating. <laughs> How many people did you show your, your, your travel book to, your, your family album to, you know? So I think you're right. It's, it's collecting so much data that we're freely given up because we're, we're using the platforms for free. And it's, and, and it's well, like Mark Zuckerberg said, well, we don't charge to use the platform. Uh, and, and the Congress person, I don't know how switch, switched on they are with regards to asking the, the relevant questions, but they said, well, how do you make money? <laughs> it's just, it, it, you know, if, my opinion is if you're going to get someone like Mark Zuckerberg in front of Congress, at least have people that understand how the Internet works, how a, a free social networking site works, uh, just so you, you, that we're going to get some relevant answers to questions that mean something. I think that was one of the frustrating things that I personally found when I, I looked back at some of the video. Yes, it was quite funny, um, but equally it was worrying that it was funny because there's a huge amount of personal information out there that's in the hands of whoever, whoever, who do we know? I mean, you know, Cambridge Analytica's, you know, got some of it, but it's, it's out there for, for many millions of people's user profiles are out there. And all we're doing is laughing at the funny responses because the questions are that stupid. So that kind of concerned me, <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah, I, I think it concerns a lot of people. And I think what we're going to go through in the next year or so is going to be a, um, uh, uh, rethinking uh, privacy policies and becoming a little bit more open and honest about our privacy policies. And the reality is, I don't think people should mind giving information to Facebook as long as they do so with their eyes wide open and they understand what they're getting. If they want to keep track of their friends, that they're going to Facebook's going to track where you are and what you're doing, checking in places, what you're eating, what you're consuming. And by the way, you're you're part of the problem because you're letting Facebook know and just all your friends know, you know, each and every place in which you're going. And the reality is that social networks have to make money and they're going to have to make money through the use of data. I think uh, the COO of Facebook uh, stated that uh, if we don't do that, we're going to have to charge for the service. And so are you willing to pay for it? And if you're not, are you willing to give us some information? The corporate stuff is a bit more concerning because we are, in essence, trying to ensure that law enforcement is going to have the capabilities to get at the information they need. But there's, there, there can be some abusive process that may go on with that. And we've seen that in other cases. Hopefully that's not the case. And I'm going to keep a close eye on uh, law enforcement's use of the Cloud Act as well as uh, the Patriot Act and you know, all the other you know, GDPR in Europe and, and, the, and, the, and the new uh, China-based security systems that are coming in in Australia as well. And you know, see if it does affect the way in which people 
leverage data and also affects the risks that they assign with moving information out to public clouds. Now, the reality is that most you know companies or all companies I deal with aren't criminal organizations, and so they really kind of have nothing to hide. Uh, they rather not, the data not be exposed and breached because that's a you know a proprietary secret to them how they're running the information. But I guess their concern would be they'd be caught up in some sort of a sting where they their data was on the same server that was on a cartel server and they seized the physical server and they were going through their information by mistake and you know those sorts of things that uh, you know could happen and i do see the government making some mistakes in those areas so it's time to keep your eyes wide open and, and kind of set the policies but but more importantly you know take a common sense approach to security and privacy and make sure you're doing the right things in terms of your data including personal and also business Absolutely. 100% Dave. That's a great end to the show as well. I think that really sort of sums up everything really nicely. So everyone needs to pay attention to their, their data and what they're giving away for free to use a service that is for free, uh, other than at the cost of your own personal life. <laughs> um, so thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week, Dave. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And uh, anybody who wants to send me a hat, man, I'm still open. Here we go. Me your too. Your name here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching the C-Suite show this week. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the videos so you don't miss out on any future shows. We also have a podcast which goes out weekly as well for all the shows, so you don't have to just watch us. You can listen to us on the go as well, as some of you, I can imagine, would prefer to watch us and not, um, sorry, uh, listen to us and not watch us. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next week.